Some of you refuse to be washed by Jesus Christ. Let me tell you about something. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do you not, do not be deceived? Neither fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, homosexuals, sodomites, thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God? And such of you were. But you were washed. But you were sanctified. But you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit. Amen. See? The word of God convicts you or makes you mad. That's what you think it's going to do tonight. It's either going to convict you and hurt you or make you want to hit me. But I don't care hit me for the Lord. It's the truth. And you're going to make a decision to get saved, be encouraged, repent your sins, get the backslidden, or walk out of your anger with God. It's going to be one of those things. I want to talk about Jesus' part of you and I'm finished. I want you to think about this. You got the critic's point of view. Then you got Mary's point of view. Then you got Jesus' point of view. How does God see this? We're going to talk about that. Think about that. God seeing what she did different than anyone else around her. God seeing things she did different than anyone else around her. This act she did was motivated by the love of Christ. It was led by God and God but if you were a fly on the wall and you seen it go down, you would have said, man, she's making a mistake. Everybody's mad at her. The thing she's doing is wrong. But God didn't see it that way. God used her for a mighty work in spite of everyone else. Listen to me. In spite of everyone's complaining, even though no one else agreed with her actions, God used her. Even though everybody doesn't believe, doesn't agree with what you're doing, brother, and what you're doing, sister, and what you're doing, brother, God will use you, and God was pleased. It didn't matter about all that other stuff going on. You've got to realize that, guys. In ministry and life, Jeremiah preached the gospel and never won one person to Christ. They killed him. God said, get up, go preach to Jeremiah, but guess what? They're not going to listen to nothing you have to say. Go do it anyway. Jeremiah obeyed and did it, but God was Listen to me. You say, preacher, I feel like God is leading you to do this one thing that no one else is going to agree with. I say, if you're disobedient to God, you're going to miss out on blessing. You're going to miss out on blessing. It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. Listen to me, guys. It doesn't matter if anyone agrees with you or not. To God, Mary gave all she had. To God, she was faithful. To God, she was obedient. To God, she was brave. To God, she was his kind of lady. To God, she was useful. Nobody else got it, though. Nobody else understood. But God, and that's what was important. And Mary did. Think about this. Listen to me, guys. <clears throat> She anointed the Son of God. She anointed the, the, the incarnate Jesus Christ. She did something that could never be done and has never been done by anybody else and no one else can ever say they did what she did. You know that? No one else can ever say they did what she did. She did something that will never be forgotten forever and ever and ever and ever, the Bible says. Listen, kings were anointed. God always sent a prophet to anoint Israel's kings. Listen to me. 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 16. 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 6. Look at the similarities in this. This is in 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 3. This is what the prophet told his servant to do. He said, take the flask of oil, pour it on his head, and say, thus says the Lord, I have anointed you king over Israel. God was willing. God used this willing lady to anoint the Son of God with the cross. Think about it. No one, ever else, no, one, no one else can say they did that. Moses can't say he did it. No prophet, no preacher, no apostle, no rich man, nobody in Hollywood, nobody in the Bible can say they did what she did. She did it. She did something powerful for God. Look at God's defense for her. Listen to what God says. Verse 10, let's read it. Verse 10. <coughs> But when Jesus 
Jesus was aware of it, they're criticizing, he said to them, Why do you trouble this woman? For she has done a good work for me. How many in this room have missed out on a chance to do something good for God? Because they were worried about how people got it. Worry about the opinions of people, how you're going to look. Worry about what your homies are going to think about you, your homegirls are going to think about you. Guess what? When you go to jail for breaking probation, your homeboys are going to be trying to sleep with your girlfriend. It won't matter to anybody thinks about you, will it? Because what someone says or what someone thinks, listen, don't miss out on being saved because you're worried about people. Do that big thing for God. If you're saved and you've never been baptized after salvation, I believe baptism is the first act of you to get baptized. Join the church! Don't be a lone Christian. There's no such thing as a lone Christian. Join the church. Serve the ministry. What has stopped you from doing what God said you to do? Think about that for a minute. Do you think Mary knew how important this work was? Do you think Mary really got how important this good work was for Jesus Christ. I don't think she did. I don't think she truly understood how much of a big deal this was when she did it. See, God let her to do it. God called her to do it. God put it on her heart and she went ahead and did it. And she might have thought it was a little thing, but to God it was something that was going to be monumental. She anointed the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There was a guy named Francis. He was a 19th century politician. Literal figure. He was a diplomat. He kept a diary. And, uh, and he went fishing with his son one day in his diary. They found his ancient diary. And it says that I went fishing with my son. And then it said, waste of time. And they found his son Adam's diary. And in the same day, in the same year, in the same month, Adam had a journal entry. And Adam said, went fishing with my dad best day of my life. You may think it's a waste of time. I'm telling you right now it's not a time. But you may think it's a waste of time. It's not a waste of time. But you think it's a little thing. Do little things for God because there is no little job for God. I'm telling you right now. If God needs you to do something, do it. Go, you go. If God needs you to stay, you stay. If God needs you to give, you give. If God needs you to stop, you stop. Don't let nobody's opinion stop you. <coughs> witness to that person that God's laid on your heart to witness to. Get over your fear. Join that church. Start that Sunday school class. What's keeping you from walking the hour? What's keeping you from coming down here and being a God's Holy Spirit spoke to your heart. He's got knocked against your heart. And you're worried about the people think. Think about it. There's no books in the Bible written by Mary. She never, she never walked in water. She never cast out demons. She never preached a sermon that we know of. Or any great mighty work besides this. But God used her to do something that will never be forgotten. Look what verse 13 says. Assuredly, this is Jesus. Assuredly, I say to you, wherever the gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will be told as a memorial to her. She did something mighty now that will never be forgotten. It was a big thing. Listen to me. This is my question to you. I got a few questions. What has God called you to do? What has He laid on your heart to do that you're wrestling with tonight? What memories have you made with God? If you breathe your last breath tonight, what would be remembered about you? I want to be remembered as the one that did this. Let me tell you something, guys. I got a buddy of mine here from Jesse. I want to point him out. He knows me. 
He ran for me. He'll tell you. Close it, don't you? I remember many nights I thought I was going to die. I used to think this way. Please, God, give me another chance. I don't want to be remembered like this. I don't want to be remembered as the one who gave up a quit. I don't want to, I don't want to be remembered as the one has to, that the preacher has to lie at his funeral. I don't want to be the one who they can go back in history 10 years ago because I've been a dark man for 10 years, a junkie for 10 years, a liar for 10 years. He used to be somebody. I remember when Big John had money. I remember when he wasn't a crackhead. I remember when he wasn't a dope man. I don't want to remember like that. I can stand here tonight in all honesty and tell you I'm the one who, I'll be remembered as the one who fought. I'll be the one who didn't give up. I want to be remembered as the one who didn't quit and did something for God. You want to make a difference? You want to make a difference for God? Call, when I give the invitation, God's led you to come. Get over that stuff and come. Leave your heart to I want to ask the worship team to come. I want you guys to bow your heads, please. I see this room full of potential. I see this room full of people who could be different difference makers. I see this room full of people who could be possible preachers. I see this room full of people who could be missionaries, mothers, and fathers. How do you want to be remembered?